What is up? My name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the exposure formula. And what that's going to allow us to do is relate scene brightness, or brightness from a light, to the proper exposure triangle of your camera. So ISO, shutter, aperture, we're going to be able to calculate things like, if we have this much light, what f-stop do we need to expose this scene at? Or the other way around, if we want to get to a certain f-stop, like a 5.6, how much light is required to do that? And I'm really excited to be able to have this bath and formula for myself because now we're able to calculate in pre-production without lights or cameras, how far does a light need to be to get a certain exposure? With this math, we can do that in a whole lot more. And we're gonna take all this data and we're gonna cram it into a Google Sheet. So get ready for a really exciting Google Sheets programming tutorial, this is that. And this means that we never have to do the math by hand. We can just enter the information that we have and it will calculate all the rest of it. And I'm of course gonna be adding this into Cine Designer as well. So I'm excited to get into this video, so let's get started. First, let's cover all the different variables that are present in this formula and then talk about them really briefly so that they make sense to you. The first, of course, is going to be from the exposure triangle. So we're gonna to need to know the ISO speed. So a camera like this is anywhere from like 100 to like 3200 and even higher, but for the film industry, it's about 800 to 1600 ISO. Moving on, we're gonna be working with the F number, which is written on all the lenses, and luckily we're working with F numbers and not the mathematical measurement of um, F-stop. We can work in F1.4, 2, 2.8, 4, aperture, F number, second variable. And the third one is shutter open time in seconds. And cameras like this, we're used to working in that already as a fraction. So if we're shooting at 24 frames per second, our shutter speed might be something like one over 48. And that's perfect. That is the shutter open time as a fraction. We're actually gonna divide that out into a decimal, but we're already there. For the people in the film industry, you probably don't work in fractions, and I don't recommend working in fractions if you're doing like film cinema shooting. You're gonna be working in frame rate and shutter angle. And those relate, and you're able to calculate with those two numbers, you're able to calculate the shutter time open, the shutter open time in seconds, and I'll show you that formula as well. Moving on to the other variables needed in the exposure formula, we're gonna to need to have scene brightness measured in lux or illuminance. So we need to measure or have the number available of how much light is falling on this incident meter here. So if you really wanna follow along with this stuff and get more serious about lighting, I do recommend picking up an incident light meter. This is a combo meter. I will be reviewing this very soon because now we have the foundational information for it, but I think if you're going to be a cinematographer and you want to learn more about lighting, that you need this tool. And I'm going to explain to you why and show you how to use it and why it's so powerful. But there is one that's even less expensive that works just as well made by Sakonic and we'll, I'll review both of those. But anyway, we need the lux. We need the illuminance and that is measured with an incident light meter. And the last variable also relates to an incident light meter and it's called the incident light meter calibration constant. And it's not something you have to memorize or look up. I have them written for you, but it essentially is how you calibrate a light meter, if you've ever wondered what that was. And it relates the size of the integrating half disc here or half dome or the disc if you're using it in this mode. It basically relates the size of this to how much light is hitting it. And I'm assuming the visual spectrum of light. So um, keeping in mind what wavelengths are hitting it and also the human response being more sensitive to 550 nanometers. All that stuff, plus the size of the disc, plus whatever electronics need to happen, it is specific to how you're measuring. So there's a different constant for this, a different constant for this, and there's different constants between different manufacturers of light meters. Again, these are just given, I'm gonna give them to you. So those are all the variables in the exposure formula, and now I'll show you how they relate to each other mathematically. So the exposure formula is the f-stop squared over the shutter open time in seconds is equal to the scene illuminance in lux multiplied by the ISO speed divided by the incident light meter calibration constant. And with this formula, we can then solve for one of the variables as long as we have all of the other ones. So in our case, we're gonna be calculating the required amount of light in lux given the ISO and all the rest of the variables. And this formula looks like this. Illuminance in lux equals the light meter calibration constant multiplied by the f-stop squared divided by the shutter open time in seconds, and that whole thing divided by ISO speed. If you plug in all the variables and you do the math, you will get the required amount of lux, and that is the formula that we're primarily gonna be working with inside of Google Sheets. So let's go there right now, and I'm gonna show you how to set up a Google Sheet to do this calculation, and then we're gonna look at the data that it gives us. 
So here we are in Google Sheets. This is a free app. It's just like Excel, except you just need a Google account and you do it in your browser. It's lovely. I love this program. And uh, I'll break down how the sheet works and then how to make your own. I might make this available. I may not. You might just have to make it yourself. We have ISO, frame rate, shutter angle, in degrees, and the incident meter constant. So you're going to enter your ISO here, enter your frame rate, enter your shutter angle. And let's talk about incident meter constant really quickly. There are three that we're going to use. And essentially, if you're using a retracted sphere or you're using a flat diffuser, you're going to want to use 250. And that's what I'm typically going to use is 250. If you have the sphere out and it's a seconic meter, you have to use 340. If you have a Minolta sphere out, it's 320. Um, from what I read, the spheres actually don't mean anything. They're, they're kind of um, an arbitrary measurement created for the film industry. So I'm going to be sticking with the physics one. So I'm going to be retracting the sphere and using a flat diffuser. And certain light meters do have flat diffusers. So uh, I would recommend using the flat diffuser. We'll talk about that more in the light meter video. So we have these variables here. And what happens is that with these two numbers, we're going to calculate the shutter open time in seconds. The other way to do this is to take 1 over 48 and you get this number or one over, whatever your fractional is, you can just divide that and put it in. But most of the film industry is working in this way and I do recommend using shutter angle versus um, fractional in the film industry. I guess that's for a different video as well, but this is the standard. I would stick with this. And the way that we're going to calculate this, I'm going to double click and I'll show you all you're going to do is you're going to hit equals and then type this in. And all this means is 1 divided by B3. So whatever you put in B3 here, B is the column, 3 is the row. Whatever is here, it's going to replace um, this B3 with. And then you're going to multiply that by 360 divided by B4, which is the shutter angle in degrees. And that's it. That's the formula. Just copy it. I mean, if you don't believe me, go look it up. That's the formula to calculate it. And it's going to dynamically calculate this. So if I change the shutter degree to like 90, you'll see that the shutter open time is less. And that is physically accurate. And so I'm going to put that back to 180. And now we're going to calculate the illuminance in lux based on these variables. And now this descending list or ascending list of f-stop here. So we'll just read it really quickly. At Alexa settings, 824-180, and using a flat diffuser, for an f-stop of 1, which almost no lenses go to 1, you need 15 lux. So that's kind of like the bottom floor as far as like um, getting proper exposure to f1. At 2.8, we need 117 lux. At 16, we need 3,840. Right? And we can do some rounding here in most cases, but these are the lux values needed for an Alexa shoot at 24 frames per second. So very, very relevant and helpful chart to have. I will be making a nice little infographic of this later, uh, especially for future videos and for inside of Cine Designer. So let's look at how we actually calculate this in case you want to make one of these your own. We're going to double click. And this is the same formula that we talked about previously here, but written out uh, in a way that Google Sheets can understand it. So. We have equals, meaning it's a calculated valuable. We have B5, which is the constant. We're going to multiply that in parentheses by A12, which A12 is right here. You'll see that it highlights it when you click it. A12 is the f-stop number. We're going to square that, which is a, a caret and then a 2. Divide that by B9, which is our calculated shutter open time. And then we divide all of this by B2, which is the ISO. And that's the formula we spoke about before. And so if you want to calculate now for f1.4 over here, if I double click here, we'll see that instead of it being a12, it's now a13. And you just keep iterating down, like this one's going to be a17, this one is a20. And you just got to make sure that you're using the right f-stop, and it's going to calculate it all for you. So I can change this again to 48 frames per second. We now need twice as much light. And that's reflected here in the Lux levels. So this is a really powerful tool in pre-production because you're able to put in the desired camera settings, especially if this is a high-speed shoot. It gets really weird. Um, and you can figure out in pre-production how much light you're going to need in Lux. And that's going to be helpful if you have the photometric data from the lights to figure out how far they need to be, how many there are. And we will eventually talk about diffusion and how that affects Lux and distribution. I have a video on that coming up shortly. But to kind of wrap this up here, let's do 1,000 frames per second at, an, at 800 ISO, 180, which 180 is aggressive. You might do like 360, but say we did 180 at 1,000 frames per second. To maintain the 28, which is probably common, we need to get 5,000 lux, which is a good amount. And if you're doing macro and you need to be like at a 16, 
you need 160,000 lux. And to put it in perspective, direct sunlight is about 100,000 lux. So this is more than direct sunlight. So very bright. Meaning in direct sunlight, you can't get to an F16. In direct sunlight, you're probably going to get to like an 1116 split at 1,000 frames per second outside. So a lot of very interesting data can be mined from this sort of thing here. And as a last example on how to use this chart, say we put back normal Alexa settings up here, and we have our calculated illuminance chart there. So say we go outside and we meter that we get an F22 or an F32 outside, and that's going to be around um, 20,000 lux in the shade. That's, that's kind of a common um, lux reading to get. So say we're at an F32, but we really want to be at an F4. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six stops down. So we need to change our exposure by six stops. And if you're in the camera department, you ha might have this memorized, but if you don't, you can go over to this little chart here that I've added, and we go to six stop difference, and that is equivalent to an ND density of 1.8 or an ND number of 106. So that's another way of using this chart. And it gets kind of confusing once you start changing this number and then this number. So you can just change the variables up here as you need. And in pre-production, you can start to figure out what lux number you want. You can start to figure out in a very visual way, visual way what ND filters you need. And there's a lot more that can be done. And I'm going to be continuing to update this chart and add in the photometrics of lights. And yeah, maybe I'll make an app out of this on the end. Aerie already has a photometric app, but it's all area lights. So maybe I'll make one that's like every light in the industry and make it really easy for people to calculate this stuff. And it will, of course, be in Cine Designer as well. So that wraps up our look at the exposure formula. And this is all part of the cinematography design series where we're combining real world optics and physics with traditional cinematography tools and techniques. And of course, with 3D rendering and Cine Designer. In future videos, we're gonna take a deeper dive look at color spectrum, color temperature, color in general, how light interacts with materials, and then specifically how light distribution changes with diffusion. I have a cool video kind of almost ready on that one. And we're gonna be reviewing lights with our new knowledge of cinematography design and optics and how light works. We're gonna be going on location and measuring available light. We're gonna be doing cine design scouts, which is kind of a new, a new concept that I'm excited to kind of work on. And we're gonna be doing a lot of new things in this vein here. It's not the way that the channel used to be. It's not how we started, but this is the direction that I'm going in thus far. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, you guys get out there and plan better, shoot better.